Hello students, welcome to Meso Study again. In today's session, we will be discussing about certain questions, CBSC pattern question exercise from the chapter Sexual Reproduction in Plant. We have discussed the whole chapter, now it's time to revise certain questions. So I have divided the question into different categories, some questions from 1 mark, some 2 marks, some 3 marks and the some 5 marks. I will tell you general strategies, how to proceed in that question, what you have to answer. I will not give you a complete explanation of the answer because that is already mentioned in the sessions. So you can refer to those sessions, but I will tell you how to proceed in such type of questions. Now let us start the question number 1, question number 1, 2, 3 are of 1 mark. Question number 1 indicate angiosperm bearing unisexual flowers are said to be either monoecious or the dioecious explained with the help of certain examples. Now listen very carefully, here it is written over here the monoecious. Now what do you mean by the monoecious? That means both the sexes are present within the same flower. Both the sexes are present, are present. Whereas in dioecious, both the sexes in separate plant, both the sexes are present in separate plants, right? That means, like what do you mean by this? That means the pistillate like your pistillate, the staminate, both are present in the same plant in this case. In this case, they are present in the separate plant. Now they are asking an example as well. In this case, you can take an example of a dia means. And in this case, you can take one example of the, you can take an example of a papaya. Right? So this was the question number one. This is of one marks and this is how you have to answer. Let's move on to the next question, question number two. How do pollen grains of Velisneria protect themselves? As you all know, the pollen grain of Velisneria, they uses water for the distribution of their pollens. So, they uses water. So, they have one covering which we call it as mucilaginous sheath. They have one mucilaginous sheath present right which protects itself which protect these pollen from the uh, which protect these pollen from the harsh action right this is how they protect themselves now let's look at the question number 3 this is also of one marks mention the function of a coleoriza now what is a coleoriza this is a protective covering which is present on the grasses on the root of embryo in grasses protective covering on roots or which roots embryo roots of grasses right so this was the question number 3 the first category one marks so it's uh, so note down this then we'll proceed towards the next category so students hope you have noted down now let's move on to the next category. La this is question number four, and you have to answer in uh, like these are the two marks questions. So you have to answer accordingly. Question indicates a mature embryo sac in a flowering plant may possess seven cells but eight nuclei. Explain with the help of a diagram only. Now. For that I need, because I have to draw a diagram, for that I need some colored chalks. So this is that diagram which I have already drawn in the sessions, but this is just a rough diagram which I am drawing right now. <clears throat> so they are asking an embryo sac. So in case of an embryo sac, this is an embryo sac, the two ends are there. This end is called as a chalazal end. This end is called as a micropylar end. Right? In the micropylar end, these are the synergids present. 
synergids, right? Here, the three antipodal cells are present. Antipodal cell. In the center, you can see a polar nuclei is present. Polar nuclei. Now, count the number of cells. Here, you know, one more avum is present, right? So, just count the number of cells which is present in it. This is number 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, 5, 6 and 7, right? And the same thing question is asking. So, in this case, you have to draw this diagram and you have to show that the 7 cells are present. Now, another part of the question indicates that in this case, the 8 nuclei are present. Yes, it's quite diff it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, these are the 8 nuclei which is present in it. This is how you have to explain. With the help of a diagram, a complete, a neat and clean diagram you should draw and you have to explain accordingly. Now, let's move on to the next question, question number 5. <coughs> a pollen grain in an angiosperm at the time of a dehiscence form an anther could be two celled or three celled. Explain how are the cells placed within the pollen grains when shed at the two cell stage. Now, they are asking when we talk about these pollen grains, they are asking about these pollen grains and they are asking about the anther, right? These enter, they are in development stage. Developing stage. Right? They are present in developing stage. And in this developing stage, they divide unequally. Divide unequally and produce and produce two types of cell, two types of cells. The first cell is called as a vegetative cell, vegetative cell and second cell is called as a generative cell, generative cell, right. In 40 percent of angiosperm, sorry, 40 percent of angiosperm, it is seen that it is seen that 3N condition is seen in case of anther. Whereas in 60 percent, in majority of cases, the condition is 2N only. That means the two type of cells, vegetative cells and the generative cells is present. Now what happens in case of these 40 percent, where the 3Ns are produced? In this case, generative cell, they further divide into the two male gamut, male gamut 1 and male gamut 2. So hope you are getting what I am trying to say that in 40 percent of the angiosperm the 3 n condition is there that means one male gamut you can count it as a 1, 1 n, 2 n and the 3 n right 3 n condition is there whereas in 60 percent of the angiosperm only the generative cells and the vegetative cells are present. This is what you have to explain and we have already studied the same in the sessions. So, as it is just a two marks question, you do not have to explain like a huge or you do not have to give a huge explanation. Just give a point wise explanation what is important, just give that explanation only. No need to write whole stories. Now, let us move on to the next question, question number 5. Now. <coughs> Another important question, write the difference between the tender coconut water and the thick white kernel of a mature coconut and their ploidy. First of all, tell me one thing, they are asking about the ploidy. They are asking about the coconut water ploidy and the white kernel. That means they are asking about the endosperm. In this case, the ploidy is always a triploid. They are always a triploid. Now, to talk about the tender coconut, tender coconut and this is they are asking about a white kernel, 
white color. In case of the tender coconut, you can see the water is there, the endosperm is there in case of the water, a watery condition is there. And this tender coconut, the endosperm develops from develop from nuclear endosperm. In this case, it developed from cellular endosperm. Cellular endosperm. This is the basic difference between a white kernel and the tender coconut water, right? So, a very short and you have to answer this in a brief. 1, 2, 3, 3 to 4 line, that's it. It is enough for your 2 marks question and this is how you have to answer, right? Let's move on to the next question. Again, this is of a new category. Describe the structure of a three-celled pollen grains. Hope you remember the diagram. I'll be giving you a rough, rough diagram of a three-celled pollen grain. So if you remember, in the session, I have drawn one diagram of this three-celled pollen grain. Right? Here, the exine is present. So, this is called as a tube. Which tube? Pollen tube. Right? Here, this will be called as a tube nucleus. Over here, you can see the two cells are present. They will be called as a male gamete. Male gamete, right? Surrounding this male gamete, can you see a sheath is present? This a red color, which I'm trying to show, a red color sheath is present, which we call it as a cytoplasmic sheath. cytoplasmic sheath is present, right? This is a whole structure of a three-celled pollen grain and you have to explain about this as we have already done the same in the sessions, right? The diagram should be neat and clean. You should draw the diagram with the pencils only. No need to use any other color. Just use only pencil. Neat and clean diagram a well labeled and try to label all these labeling on one side. Do not spread all these labeling towards every side. So just do, just do that. Now this was a question number 7. Let's move on to the next question, question number 8. Differentiate between a periplasm, oh sorry, perisperm and endosperm giving one example of each. <coughs> so, perisperm, endosperm. First of all, the perisperm, how perisperms are formed? They are formed from persistent remain of nucleus, of nucleus. Now how these endosperms are formed? These are formed from primary endosperm nucleus. primary endosperm nucleus, right? Now, perisperm is a part of seed. It is a part of seed. Whereas these endosperms, they act as a storage of food material. Right? When you look at this perisperm, they are in a dry condition, quite hard they are, 
they are present in a dry condition and they are fleshy or they are having a watery fluid present, watery, right. In case of the perisperm, we have one example like black pepper. black pepper. Endosperm, you can take an example of a coconut, coconut water, right. Coconut water. So, these are the certain, I have just mentioned a few difference, few differences. You can add on a few because we have already completed the same in the session. You have to add on few because if I try to explain each and every dif difference in the today's session, the session will be very much long. So, uh, like my main motive is to tell you what you have to write in this question on how you have to proceed. So, these are the very easy questions. Now, let us move on to the next category. So, these are the five marks question. Draw a diagram of an enlarged view of TS of 1 microsporangium of an angiosperm. Label the tapetum, these middle layers, endothesium and the microspore mother cell. Now, hope you remember the diagram. That was a very easy diagram like this, right. You have to draw the, this one diagram as well as another diagram which I have drawn. You can make a cut like this, right and towards the outer side one layer is present which is called as a epidermis, this is called as a epidermis, right. After that another layer which is present is called as a endothesium. Which layer? Endothesium. I am just giving you a rough diagram. After that, two to three layers of another cells are present, which we call it as a middle layer. they will be called as a middle layer. Now, after that one very important layer is present which we call it as a tapetum which provide nutrition. This layer is called as a tapetum, right. Towards the inner side these microspore mother cells are present. Microspore mother cell are present. Now come back to question. Draw a label diagram and an enlarged view. Enlarged view. You do not have to draw this diagram. This is not an enlarged view. So, in the rough you can draw this diagram and later on you can explain the detailed diagram which was regarding this. This is not a complete diagram but you have to explain like this a very well labeled a beautiful diagram you have to draw if such type of question comes in your exam. So, you have to label the tapetum, middle layer, endothesium and the microspore mother cells. All of these four parts I have already labeled. Now, mention the characteristic feature in the function of the tapetum. You all know the function of the uh, tapetum that it provide nutrition right the main function that it provide a nourishment. So, third is explain the following giving reason pollen grains are well preserved as fossils. Now, third part as you all know that pollen grains the outermost covering of the pollen grain they have exine present right and which is a protective layer and this exine which is present is made up of sporopollenin. Sporopollenin irrespective of action of alkali, irrespective of action of any kind of acid nothing happens to these pollen grains. So, they can be easily preserved in the fossils. Let us look at the B option. 
pollen tablets are used of the public these day the reason is that they are a very good source of the nutrient that is why they are used by many people so this is what how you have to answer like it is quite a definite that when you will be appearing for the exam a long answer type if such long answer type question will be asked in that case the question question will be made up of different certain different parts and each part will be having a specific mark so you have to answer accordingly try to make a diagram because diagram makes your whole answer very much uh, uh, like uh, it, it is very much impressive right now let's move on to the next question question number 10 so explain the event after pollination now the pollination has happened we have to explain the exact process for the formation of a seed in angiosperm mention the ploidy level now i will not be explaining the whole process in detail but in this case what you have to explain is first how the double fertilization happens double fertilization hope you remember the session i have discussed regarding the double fertilization very 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 important step second you have to explain the another that is a embryo formation embryo formation you also have to explain regarding the endosperm formation all these processes you have to explain with neat and clean diagrams with neat and clean diagrams right let's look at the second part mention the ploidy levels of the cells of the different part of albuminous seed first of all in this case of embryo embryo will be diploid whereas the endosperm that will be triploid that will be triploid right so students we have discussed 10 questions from a different category each of questions are from different category this is how you have to explain if you have any doubt regarding what to explain in this how to explain in this how to explain to uh, that i have already explained to you what to explain you can go back to the session if you remember the session that is well and good if you don't remember that is very bad at your part because if you have seen the session and still you are not able to answer these easy question that is very bad part so go back to the session watch them again draw the diagram make your own notes and then explain these question of your by your own and also you can practice certain questions which are mentioned at the end of each chapter at the end of each chapter which is mentioned in the ebook do practice them so we'll meet in next session we'll discuss a new chapter till then take care of yourself and thank you so much students for watching this